so today we're gonna make some cinnamon raisin bread um, and we're gonna make it in a Pullman um, loaf pan and if you don't know what a Pullman loaf pan is it looks like this okay it's a typical loaf pan it's got a top slides on, put your dough in there, let it rise to almost to the top. So today's recipe is going to be from the King, King Arthur, what you're going to need is, you need uh, 510 grams of flour, all-purpose flour, you're going to need 28 grams potato flour, 53 grams of sugar, 46 grams of uh, dry milk, about two teaspoons of sugar, you need to use two teaspoons of yeast, sorry, there's my yeast, you're going to need 35 grams of vegetable oil, 378 grams of water, and you're going to need 127 grams of raisins. This, where am I? Okay. This, this is called lectithin. It's a soy product. You can get it at GNC. And that's 14 grams. It's going to help make it soft. So this is just the dough. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do it by hand. You could definitely use a mixer. I like doing it by hand because I like I like to, to feel the the dough. And and then so I so I know when it's um, needed enough. You're gonna you're gonna work it for about um, seven minutes and then after seven minutes you're gonna add your raisins and then you're gonna work it for another couple minutes until all the raisins are worked in. We're gonna start with adding Okay, so we're going to add, that was the potato flour, sugar, dried milk, salt, so what we have left is the water. The, the yeast and the oil and the lectithin. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to warm up the water. If you warm up the water, you don't want it any hotter than 110. Otherwise it kills the yeast. Um, then I'm going to I'm going to add just a little bit of honey in there for the uh, yeast to feed on. I'm going to add the uh, lectithin and the um, vegetable oil. Well, this has never happened to me before. Um, I went to go do something. It took me about 15 minutes. I came back. And, uh, yeah, this yeast seems to be okay. So we're going to add that to the dry mixture. What I have here, if you can see it, might be better that way. This is called a Danish dough whisk. Um, another good investment if you do a lot of baking and, and mix it by hand. Your dough will come together really quick with this. So let's see if we can get this in without spilling it anymore. Alright, so that's going to go in there. Um, okay, so... Watch how quick this comes together. Just as easy as that, it pretty much comes together. Now this dough is going to be this dough is going to be a wet dough, and uh, try not to add any flour if you can help it. All right. So I'm going to work this by hand, and then uh, then I'll be back. All right. You can see that 
this is still sticky. This is probably about five minutes. All right, it's uh, I've added probably half a cup of flour during the kneading process. I don't want to add any more because I don't want it to be too uh, too dry. If it's too dry, it becomes too dense. All right, so um, if you get at this point, you, you know the stickiness bothers you. Put a little bit of oil down on your bench. Oil your hands; it'll keep it from sticking. Um, but this still needs a little bit more. It's not quite. It's not quite there, uh, but don't forget we still have to add uh, the raisins. Uh, just for the record, every time I bake, I wash my counter real good, and then I sanitize it with 70% isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. Um, so I know my bench is clean, and of course I wash my hands. So. I'm going to finish this up. Um, I'll see what I can do once the uh, once I add the raisins. Hopefully my kids will be up and then I can have some help with the camera work. Uh, but that's it. Thanks. Alright, so I just realized it's not coming together because it's a humid day. So altogether I've used probably three quarters of a cup extra of, uh, of flour and it's just now it's still soft I just gotta work this little bit in and then we'll put the raisins in um, you still want it to stick to your bench a little bit but not to the point where it leaves uh, dough behind So. Yeah, I can feel it. Okay. So now it's starting to get tacky. You'll see. It sticks to the bench, but it's not leaving anything behind. That's what you want. Okay. So I think we're ready for the raisins. right or wrong way to do this as long as you incorporate those raisins so I put some raisins then I'll fold it flatten it out plastic bench scraper definitely worth the buck. Um, you can probably get them online. I get mine at a uh, restaurant supply place. You get like half a dozen for like five dollars. So we're gonna once we get these initially into the dough, then we're gonna need it some more for about another two three minutes. You know, uh, if you're doing this in a machine, I would say be mindful of how much you mix it because you can you can over knead it. Um, but when you're doing it by hand, I think you'll tire out before it gets over kneaded. So I'm just uh, kneading is basically form a ball. Push forward, rotate, pull it back. That's all kneading is. And again, you can see as much flour as I added, it's still sticky. Okay, bowl.
you don't have to measure it's just a little bit of oil doesn't matter vegetable canola just remember it might pick up a little bit of flavor you probably won't notice it I'm just spreading it around you take your dough put the dough in turn get it all coated and now is, is the uh, the first ride well yeah the first ride so cover it so it doesn't get a draft gets a draft gets dried out if it gets dried out it's hard to work with all right so Oh, my camera's all full of flour. My kids are going to kill me. So that's it. So I have a feature on my oven. Even though it's warm, it's bread proof. It'll be 100 degrees. I throw it in for about an hour, two hours, depending on your temperature, until... Until uh, it doubles in size. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna make the um, the filling. Now, the filling calls for something called um, instant clear gel. I've made it without the instant clear gel several times, and it's uh, it makes it hard to roll. It winds up uh, winds up oozing out. So what I got was is I got some instant pectin. Hopefully that'll. I saw this in the store, and I figured, well, you know, that's for making like pie fillings and stuff, and it doesn't cre it doesn't require cooking. I tried um, cornstarch, corn um, just making a slurry of cornstarch and to try to thicken it up and putting it in hot water, making the gel, and then adding that gel to the filling. It's worked, but, you know, with, you know, different levels of success. So I'm going to try this and see what happens. So I guess the idea is, is when we spread it out, we want it kind of thick so it doesn't run, so this way when we roll it, it will um, kind of stay in place, so this way you get that nice swirl in the middle of the loaf. Um, it's going to be a trial and error type thing, so... Um, I bought it, I'm going to try to use it, and we'll see what happens. If not, then I'll just use it for um, pie filling. It's not like I don't bake or cook, you know. So, anyway, um, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I did the filling. I, uh, the filling is... That's the filling. Alright, it... Uh, Seems kind of runny still, even after using, even after using the um, the pectin. So um, I, I decided to make it ahead of time, put it in the fridge, and see if it sets up. And the filling is um, 11 grams of cinnamon, 163 grams of sugar. I used 8 grams of pectin, and you need uh, 57 grams of flour two large eggs and 28 grams of water. Okay, so here we have the dough is doubled in size. It's been about an hour and a half or so. Now we just punch this down. Put it on your bench. Bench is clean. You want to make it roughly this, uh, a rectangle the size of your pan. So, you spread it out the best you can.
and I think that should be about it. So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to spread the filling. Now, like I said before, I used the this is the first time I'm using the pectin filling, and it uh, it seems okay. I don't know if it seems much different. Um, we'll, we'll see how it works out. You just want to spread that. seems a little bit thicker than when I first made it and put it in the fridge. I like leaving a border just if you have to seal it, it uh, works so much better. Now comes the challenging part, is rolling this up without losing the filling. You gotta lose some, but... So, set that aside. Um, so we roll this way. does so I guess that that pectin that instant pectin worked pretty good normally I would have a big mess yeah, I don't have a big mess I do have a mess that's why I'm doing not so neat shit. now you want to try to get this in seam down just like that press it down. I have a feeling this is going to be one of my best loaves. Press it down. And now, you wait again. So what you need to do is, oh by the way, I did grease, I did grease the, uh, the pan. I used I use butter. Um, the videos that I've seen, uh, everybody greases them, although this is a nonstick pan. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this on. We're just going to leave it open a little bit. I'm just going to cover that little bit just to keep the air out. And we're going to want this to come up to not quite the top, maybe a half inch from the top. That's going to probably take about 45 minutes. So, uh, in the meantime, you put your oven on at 375. It's going to go in for about 40 minutes at 375. Then you're going to take the top off and then you're going to bake it again for another 5 to 8 minutes without the cover. Okay, so I, uh, halfway through, I'm sorry, not halfway through, um, Cooked it for 35 minutes, took the top off, then put it back in for another 5 minutes, and it just came out. Ow, and that's still hot. 375 degrees Fahrenheit, in for 35 minutes, took it out, took the top off, popped it back in for another 5 minutes, and uh, then I took it out. Now I'm going to let it sit a little bit. Okay, so there you have it. I put it out on the cooling rack. Um, this should really cool for an hour before you cut into it. I know it's going to be hard to resist, but it's for the better. So you'll see how you get that nice square shape. 
using the Pullman and again I think they're about $25 on Amazon um, I hemmed and hawed for a while I hemmed and hawed for a while about getting it um, because I'm cheap and um, I've used it quite a bit so far and I'm very pleased with it so anyway um, I hope you like the video and um, like, subscribe, do whatever, and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so uh, it's been a while since the bread is done. I figured I'd, I'd wait. And there's the inside. And it's nice and soft. And uh, that's what you want. So... Let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know what I'm doing good, what I'm doing bad.